uh, loose of material to actually build something out of and then continue to use it as its own base. Um, whereas this uh, polystyrene foam, it will tear off a top sheet as well, but it's not quite as, uh, I guess, fragmented as these particles. Um, as far as plastics are concerned, there's this material called ABS. ABS is pretty easy to get a hold of from hobby shops um, and some uh, plastic supply places. You can usually tell it because it's glossy on, on it instead of styrene, which is typically yeah. uh, more porous and matte. It, uh, it doesn't sand very well. Um, it doesn't form very well. When you, when you heat it and bend it, it tends to kind of wave and buckle. Um, and it doesn't glue very well. There's very few glues that will adhere to this. Um, paint doesn't like to stick to it either. A lot of times you'll see this used in store displays, um, and it's just its natural black color. You can vacuum form it, but uh, by and large, not really, not really something I would recommend. Um, and, and like we were saying, the, the materials we are talking about, these are very easy to use. It's not so much that they're better, more expensive, or uh, have any sort of um, industry properties that we're recommending. It's just that for what the results that we want to do, this has been the best for us. Specifically for small scale, it is the cheapest way to go, where you don't have to go spending lots of money on, you know, the professional grade eight foot by four foot by two foot blue foam blocks that they are. Well, yeah, Iron Man out of. There are there are blocks of extruded polystyrene foam that are very dense. Um, Foss shape is one of them. Um, they have brand names that I don't quite recall. Um, a sheet of this in that super high density stuff is going to cost maybe forty or fifty dollars. They use that for CNC mills. Um, that's something that's a lot more higher end, rapid prototyping type, type stuff. Um, if you have access to it, it's fantastic. Um, if you mess anything up on it, it's very expensive. Okay, so, uh, did anybody else have any questions about materials before we go on? Um, no. The white plastic is, uh, what is it called? This is called Styrene. 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 And uh, this comes in different thicknesses. This right here is 0 .060. Um, it's very, very pointy. Um, yeah, 0 .060 inches. Um, most of the styrene you see is going to be around this thickness. Um, it seems pretty flimsy on its own. It's good for vacuum forming or heat forming. Um, you can get it in thinner pieces, 0 0.040, 0 0.02, which is almost like a sheet of paper, and then thicker as well. Um, sign shops will have different thicknesses of this as well. And you can just use like a heat gun to Yep, yep. Um, you can use a heat gun on it. You can use a hair dryer on it. Um, there's a, a thing called an oven glove that you can get, like Home Depot. It's this uh, open, uh, I forget what the fiber is, but basically you can rub your hand over something like this while it's still hot and not burn it. Um, if you don't have a vacuum forming machine, a lot of people don't, um, you can heat up, go over a form, and then push it into shape. Um, that way you don't burn the knots in your hand. One of the things to be careful about whenever you're using uh, any sheet plastic like that, uh, you can use heat guns, but you have to be careful. Uh, any Plastic you need to bend will start bending being flimsy around 212 to 20 degrees. Uh, so that's all you need. Uh, but your local heat guns are probably going to have between 700 and 900 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's just way too much. It will, if you don't heat it up slowly and hold it really far back, it'll start scarring and it'll start boiling and blistering that top layer and it'll ruin everything for you. It's also not going to be great then. Yeah, it details. <laughs> uh, that's why with Sintra I prefer to foil it just because I can get really uniform uh, uh, heat points. But if you were trying to do just like maybe a little corner and you wanted to get bent over, a heat gun does work perfectly for that because it's just spot heat on that one area. It's a lot more control. And could you um, use like a hot air glue, a hair gun, and bend it over a bent piece of styrofoam to start from? Mm, I wouldn't try that. Chances are it melt the styrofoam underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, polystyrene foam like this melts at a much lower temperature because a lot of air in here. Technically, these two things are the same base material. Plastic. This has just been extruded with foam. Not to mention, it's all uh, uh, styrofoam is typically kind of spongy, so you want something that's a little bit more rigid and you can really press down hard on. Um, so real quick, uh, just how I went and we going through a build process. I didn't bring the whole gun because I haven't made casts of it. And it's more valuable to me alive. Um, so this was a one eighth inch uh, figure of uh, this one gun I wanted to make. I uh, had a buddy of mine with a really nice camera. Uh, take close-ups of it, and this was my uh, master. I printed this out uh, on a whole bunch of sheets of paper, and this was the scale I wanted to build it. I just scaled it up and uh, printed off a bunch of uh, eight half by eleven sheets of paper, pasted them all together, and uh, there you go. I have the actual scale. After that, I started. Oh, these are turned over here. Um, All right, so then I just uh, started getting with 
something that's about the right shape. I'm really good with working with wood. He's better with working uh, in the in the. Uh, uh, this is a piece of pine. Just a piece of pine that I got together and started drilling to about the right shape. Uh, this is real rough right here, so I can uh, go in there with all my big hacksaws and uh, bandsaws and get rough shapes. I do mine.
Um, for your first tool, the dribble's a must. Yeah. Uh, I would totally agree. Um, the portal gun, I had two power tools. I had a Dremel and I had a hand sander, uh, a portable sander. That was it. Outside of that are all hand saws, hand files, um, you know, and sandpaper. You don't need a big workshop to do this sort of stuff. It helps, but you know, <laughs> it, in my opinion, the best two things you can start off with are going to be a Dremel tool and an Oracle sander. So the yep. is that because there's just so much sanding that's in there doing yep. this? Yeah, kind of getting, getting sort of large dome shapes, correct? As you can see, I do a lot of that sort of stuff. These, you know, large planes. Um, it's helpful uh, doing rough stages, uh, starting from uh, a base shape. Um, and you get some, you know, 60 or 80 grit on there to just kind of rough block out and then go from there. It's really a time saver. That isn't an, in a, isn't a necessity either. You know, it's really just one of the things that's going to save you most time. Does it also make it easier just to make the dump shape kind of keep it more even? I think so. Some people have some difficulty doing that actually uh, because they'll they'll stay in one spot too long and kind of create flat spots along a, a, a curved shape. It's something you got to get a feel for. And curved shape is going to be the hardest thing to do, especially like these, because you have to have it perfectly symmetrical. So it again is really what you're comfortable with. I know a lot of people uh, when they're doing instead of just using the typical sandpaper, they'll get a, a sanding sponge like this. This is great for uh, doing curved surfaces and getting things all sort of even up and layered down. Uh, because the thing lasts a pretty good while. It's not too uh, uh, not too coarse, so you're going to start gouging into it like some sandpaper. So it's just kind of the safe way to go. You can get a you know a dozen of those versus a couple bucks at like Harbor Free Tools. That's one of my favorite things to stand with other than a portable sander. Um, <coughs> again, whenever you're building things like this, I had a lot more pieces that. Uh, came out that had to be angled down and angled out. And so you can see I filled it with the uh, orange spotting putty. I had to sand it more. I had to paint it more. And by the way, you want to paint uh, several layers with uh, with mass building primer. Uh, that's when you get your auto shop to the bottom. Mine's dry line. Yeah, but I, it, it's a personal brand type thing. Yeah. Uh, mass building primer will actually add mass to it, so when you sand it down, it'll fill in a lot of those hairline cracks. And so that's why you see all these really crazy, funky paint jobs on a lot of our stuff in progress. Because we're putting the orange primer on there, we're getting some gray primer, um, orange bondo on there, getting the gray primer on there, and trying to get it to all be smooth. And it really does help to do that, you know, layered process. Same thing as pulling it down on the car. Um, so. Again, I use Cinture for everything. This was the uh, back end stock where it actually presses into your shoulder. And I was just able to lay the pieces over my uh, my printed out gun and eyeball them, give them about the right uh, size and shape. Glue everything together with uh, super glue and stick it on there. And then you can see these parts right here. You just need to sand them down again. Portable sander is the best. I dribbled a lot of that. And again, filled it with uh, a lot more primer. And I'm being repetitive there, but really it's just uh, filling with bondo and sanding it down some more again and again. And that's where, about where it lays right now. And this is, uh, again, an in, uh, in progress review, so I can uh, bring a finished piece on this one yet. I'm almost ready to, almost ready to be cast at this point, but again, it's in progress for me. I'm sorry? So whenever you have a, a piece that you have finished and you want to make several of them, uh, I want to be able to make several of these guns. Instead of going through the full build process of filling each of these details over and over again, I can take a silicone negative copy of it. I can pour silicone on there and have a negative version of it. Fill that negative copy with uh, plastic and pop out as many copies as I want. This is a uh, this is a pauldron that I made, a sculpted piece. This was made out of mostly a, a material called epoxy sculpt. Because of that, this thing weighs probably about four pounds. It's a little difficult if you want to have two of these on your arm and have them sit there the whole day. Um, in order to make copies of this, I only wanted to sculpt the one, but I needed two finished ones. So I made what's called a mold. That's what Bill was talking about earlier. This right here on the inside of this is this flexible rubber material. On the outside is a hard shell to keep the flexible rubber in shape. Um, you pour this stuff over this. Once it cures, you're able to remove the, the original piece and you have a negative. Um, we'll get into this a little bit more off now on the 530. We'll yeah. get into advanced armor making, casting, molding. 
But the short version is, 